Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 0.22, the most recent edition, and that introduces Career Mode, which means we no longer start with all of the parts. Um, we don't have a budget just yet, but I believe that's coming in the more later versions. Uh, so I thought I would start a new series alongside uh, New Sunrise. New Sunrise is not going away anywhere. And the first and most interesting thing you'll notice here on the uh, intro menu is we have this research and development building. Uh, also, I believe uh, over here is the command area. That's moved away from over here before. Uh, the space plane hangar. The astronaut complex has a very interesting new interior, so uh, our, our boys are getting their nice time off, it would seem. Uh, and more or less everything else is fine, but the research and development thing is most of this update. So. In the course of playing the game, you will earn science, which allows you to pay for upgrades like this one. How hard can rocket science be anyway? You get decoblers, containment units, all that stuff. And uh, to do that, we need to actually do something. So let's head into the VAB and see what we can figure out. And of course, we don't have all that many parts, so let's get a communitron so we can transmit data. Now let's get a parachute because this is a manned unit and we don't want people dying. Uh, let's just grab a fuel booster. Actually, let's grab a little bit more than that. Uh, let's see, fuel tank, liquid fuel engine, which I can't put down because that's the way. Connect. Connect. And let's get these into different pieces here so that everything isn't joining at once. Okay, and uh, I would put Bill, but I killed him the last time he was my first person in the series. So we'll keep that as is, and we shall launch with that and see what kind of science we can pick up in the course of this very first uh, launch inside of the program. So now we are literally building our program up from scratch. And here we go. Yeah, that's staying steady. Thankfully, this command module does still have SAS, so it's staying fairly stable, even though we don't have any aerodynamic parts to speak of here. The solid fuel rocket is overheating, but it looks like we're going to run out of solid fuel before that becomes an issue, so not that big a problem. And then normally... This, we should be able to fire this next engine. Although apparently we're now firing it through the dead husk of the solid fuel engine because it hasn't decoupled. So that's an odd one. That's unusual. Okay, and we're still pushing up. And we are now out of fuel. So let's get Jeb to go on a quick bit of an EVA so that we can get an EVA report. Most precarious situation. You don't say. Uh, keep that data. Uh, you can board. And we will also get a crew report from in here. Yeah, good. Keep that. Uh, I'm tempted, very tempted now to uh, deploy our thing. But now you see the communication action was previously just a cosmetic thing, but now we can actually use it to uh, transmit our data. And we've run out of electric charge now, so we can't actually transmit it all, which means we now need to actually get this thing home safely. So in that interest, let's release our parachute. And that will allow us to hopefully land safely. Uh, looks like we're going to land, uh, I don't think on the ramp of the uh, launch pad, but very close to it. And, oh boy, we're still going very quickly, so parachute, please. Thank you. We have a G-Force moment there, but we should be okay. Uh, what's the crew port say? Sure, looking inviting, we'll keep that. Okay, and now you, the two ways that you can get science back home is to recover the vessel, uh, which is more or less whenever you land on Kerbin safely, uh, or to transmit it using things like the Camino drone which is the one that we start out with. So let's see if we can actually manage this. Uh, we're still going a little over 10 meters per second, which is about 30 miles an hour, more or less. So this is going to be interesting. Okay, okay, thankfully, yeah, solid fuel booster broke our fall. 
So uh, now we can recover the vessel, which now has a neat little button up there. And that will tell us what science we managed to recover from that. So we got a crew report, and we got the recovery of a vessel that survived a flight, which is worth quite a bit. So that gained us, gained us 10 science, which we can now spend in research and development. So let us buy basic rockety. Okay, so that nets us the decoupler, that also nets us mystery goo. Uh, no batteries, no form of power, con power, uh, power creation just yet. But uh, it does mean that we can then proceed to survivability, which will get to us uh, the radial parachute, as well as some landing struts and a new engine. Uh, stability, which gets us uh, a couple of airplane parts and the radial decoupler for some strange reason. And general rocketry, which will get us the big solar fuel booster, as well as uh, Cybertrons and whatnot. But to do all that, we're going to need even more science, because these get increasingly more expensive. So back into the VAB, uh, let's redesign this a little bit. So let's see for utility, uh, is it utility? It's structural, there we go. Let us fix that decoupling issue. So that we can actually get this thing to function properly. Okay, let's take those all in the right nodes. Good. And we got a new science part, which was this Mystery Goo Containment Unit. So we'll stick that on the opposing side here. And we'll be able to see what that comes up with when we get higher up. So we've got our parachute. We've got nothing in aerodynamic just yet. We have the girder inside of structural. We don't actually have, like, the big clamp that we can stick on the side of our things, but we have that. No reaction wheels, fuel tanks. Okay, so, Jeb. Your tune again. I prefer to have Dean, personally. Dean Kerman is a good guy, and he's pretty... Well, actually, I suppose in this particular era, he's not that experienced. But uh, suffice it to say, I wouldn't mind having him around right now. Okay, so, in three, two, and one. Okay, we're a little to the side because of this goo container, it seems. But that shouldn't cause us too many issues. And even if it does, we can jettison the, major the vast majority of this craft and deploy our parachute, so... Well, that will give us a big bonus, in terms of landing safely. What I did not mention, while we were quickly in the VAB there, is that there is also now a sub-assembly section. Um, whoop, and there goes our solid fuel booster. Uh, which is sort of the way that my sub-assembly loader in New Sunrise works, except it's built into the VAB and you can just drag parts to it, which is fantastic. It's great to have that integrated now, because that's been coming for quite some time, and whoop, we are hitting exit tree there. Okay, so let's get ourselves some interesting stuff here. So the goo seems to be getting very cold as we're exiting the atmosphere. Uh, let's get ourselves a crew report as well. Okay, doesn't seem to be anything interesting going on there. And let's get Jeb to give us an EVA report. Starting to feel we should really get back into the ship. Whoa, oh dear. Um. Oh, Jeb, 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 you're... Oh, um. Get back down, please. Because, uh, I'm going to need you to land in order for me to recover that report. Jeb, come on, come on. Little bit, come on, little bit more. Yes, good. You're nearly there, good. Oh, I don't have my docking controls here, come on. Just need you to get a little grab onto it and board, board the hell out of it, Jeb. <laughs> okay. Right, well, let's transmit whatever we can uh, with our limited data here. So there goes the EVA report. And we're out of charge now. Okay. So we can stop transmitting that. So unfortunately there goes the report that he just risked his life to get. Okay, let's turn this thing a bit so that I can decouple. Okay, our parachute is, contrary to its appearance, now deployed. So let's get back to uh, a decent uh, side here. Now let's not observe the mystery again. Okay, that should be good for returning. 
And we're now a lot lighter, so we can pretty much guarantee that we're going to survive this landing. And then we can see what our next upgrade is. Okay, there's our parachute. Triggered itself now. And there's the moon. Someday, moon. Someday. We'll be with you soon. Lovely. Oh, and there goes our rocket section. So we should see that crash soon. We appear to be quite a ways away from Kerbal Space Center now, actually. Which I'm guessing is because the Mystery Goo canister pulled us to the side. But oh well, it's not that big of an issue. That thing is falling fast. Hmm. I'm already naming or saving these things because they're very s simple and quick to make. And I don't even have any reason for sub-assemblies. Although I might make a sub-assembly of this part, part here just because I'm using it a lot. Okay, we're still at four and a half thousand meters. That's gone into kilometers now. I'm suddenly getting deja vu, but I'm not sure how. This seems somehow familiar. Anyways, going down. Okay, we're at about two kilometers now, so we should expect to see that one crash soon. And there it goes. Yep, but that's fine. So up here. We have our parachute coming out about now. Yep, there we go, just under 600. So we should be able to land perfectly safely. And look at that, we're going 6.8 meters per second. That is perfectly fine. So we should land without any kind of problems. Although this is going to take a little bit more time. I'm going to try and avoid the time acceleration. Uh, that may mean that I'm going to have to live stream some of these episodes later on when we get into interplanetary distances. Look at that moon, perfect day for that. Uh, but I'm also going to try not to revert missions, which means I'm going to focus very quite a bit on safety. Which means no more firing personnel mid-flight. Oh well. But a uh, oh, bit of an interesting shading view there with the parachute, but uh, we should be touching down in a little bit. We're still at a little over half the uh, standard speed limit here in England, but we should be okay. He said as he drank a bit of tea, just so he's even more English. Anyways, uh, we are landing about now. Not a single glitch. Okay, let's get a ground report from you. Whoop, not what I meant to do. EVA, get back down, let go, thank you. Okay, so give us a surface sample. Very muddy and sunny, there might be a body of water nearby. I think that's true. And let us also observe the Grimmia mystery goo if we can. Uh, which we can't because we can't open it because this thing doesn't have a significant thing. Uh, store the experiment data, grab, board, Observe mystery you. Goo can wait near, near the water facing side of the container. Hmm, that is curious indeed. Well, we don't have the power to transmit that, so we'll recover the vessel and Jeb include it again. And let's see what we managed to grab from all that. So we got recover a vessel that can survive the flight, so that's another point eight science. Mystery your observation from Coburn's Shores, that's another three science. Surface sample from Coburn's Shores, that's another nine science. So in all, plus 12.8. We're doing very well here. And let's see, what should we do next? Well, I want to get the radial decoupler. And you'll find out why in a quick moment. And that gives us access to this next one, which will give us the uh, stability enhancer things, as well as the struts, another radial decouplers, tricouplers, flight control is an accessible thing, which gives us our first probe body, as well as reaction wheels. So, uh... We don't have anything for those, and they also have some prerequisites that we don't presently have access to, so... Uh, structural, get our radial decouplers out. Let's get four of these. Stick our fuel boosters on them. Uh, those are a little off. There we go. Perfect, and from the aerodynamics we can also get nose cones. Make them look a little bit prettier. And let's also get some winglets, because if this thing is going to get thrown off course by the 
mystery goo, but I want to try and avoid that. Okay, so that is going to trigger everything there, and then we can trigger the buying the decouplers. Get that in there, good. Decouple that, all things good, right. So let's get that to a launch then. And uh, Jeb, I think this might be enough to send you into outer space, like strictly out of the atmosphere. So uh, this is going to be an interesting one, fellas. Let's see how we do. Stage. Okay, so we've got the out of four salt fuel boosters going here. Uh, we're tilting north quite a ways. Um, those winglets don't seem to be doing much for us. In fact, they appear to be suiciding us. <laughs> we're almost out of fuel in this stage. Maybe I should have put those at uh, 90 degree angles in the mystery goo. Okay, perfect. Beautiful separation. Wow, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that north again. Or south, as the case may be. But we are heading out of the pea soup now. That's good to see. How much solid fuel is left? I bet we can't actually throttle down or turn off the solid fuel boosters. They're a continuous reaction. But the liquid fuel uh, rocket that's in there, we will be able to. So let's get out of that. And let's see what our apoapsis here is. It is a 4,000. So uh, let us burn that up a little bit more. See if we can get this to a low atmosphere kind of thing. Okay, 70. Let's take that. Uh, to add a maneuver or to fly to the, by the seat of our pants at this point, let's add a maneuver because heck knows I suck at this. And we definitely do not have, uh, we don't have any kind of readout on how, many, how much meters per second we have because we don't have the flight engineer installed now. Okay, there is our maneuver node. Perfect. And we have about a minute and 22 seconds to go, so... While we wait, as we are passing right out of the atmosphere now, let's observe the mystery goo, which is telling us that it seems to be getting very cold. I can kind of understand why. And uh, let's get a crew report from Jeb. Uh, it doesn't seem to be saying much information. Hmm. It's a pity. Uh, but we are in the atmosphere now, out of the, out of the atmosphere, uh, heading towards our... Uh, apoapsis now. In my last episode of News Summer, I wasn't sure if it was periapsis or apoapsis, but it is in fact the uh, the apoapsis. What's Jeb's view like? Turn to open. Maybe a good idea to keep that to last minute. There's some tanks, possibly of mystery goo. And uh, oh, there is our maneuver node coming into play there. That's good. And uh, there is our... We can actually, you can actually do some of the controlling in here, but I'm not going to, because heck knows, I don't know what the time is right now. Okay, let's burn now. Because it's an ideal you burn before you hit the maneuver node. And let's just burn until we run out of fuel. And we are out of fuel there, so... We're going to be out of the atmosphere for a fair bit of time now. I get rid of the move node. Look at that. Okay, so Jeb, you are the first Kerbal to exit the atmosphere. How do you feel about that? Let's grab your EVA report from this. If you're starting to feel you should really get back into the ship. You say that a lot. I don't know why. Okay, let's store that. And then you can get back in. Okay, there you are. Uh, reset the goo canister. Okay, so now we are on our return course. Uh, let's set a remove a maneuver node there to tell us how long that's going to be, which is about one minute and twenty seconds. So, I am going to switch around our stages a little bit to get that there, so I don't deploy the parachute too early, and then we're going to stage once more because that will separate us from that very heavy launch section. So we haven't reached orbit yet, but within, I think it's the first day now, we have actually managed to make it out of the atmosphere. And so we've been suborbital, 
and Jebediah has been the first person, the first uh, Kerbal on the planet to exit the atmosphere. So I hope he uh, appreciates that. Okay, so let's just turn towards our retrograde so that we uh, can apply the heat shield appropriately. We've stored the data from the goo canister, so this shouldn't uh, worry it any. Okay, let's observe that. If we can. We haven't trans- I don't think we've transmitted any information yet. Goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. Okay, let's try transmitting some of this data. Just in case. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing, that's why. And I need to keep an eye because we might just have an issue very soon. Now, it is fairly energy intensive transmitting data, especially if you have a lot of it. Okay, so we are now below 6,000 meters. And yeah, I'll be happy to have at least a solar panel, maybe an RTG. RTGs I've been using a lot recently because I've gotten a bit tired of having to use um, solar panels when I keep ending up on areas at night, so it's kind of a pain. So I keep using RTGs to make up for that. So the, uh, the escape pods actually on the Apollo are fully RTG powered. Which is cool to know that they'll always have power, no matter when they're needed. Makes them very reliable. Good, okay, we are doing well there. 7.2 meters per second. Whoop. And that, I presume, was the smoke plume from our previous stages landing on the ground. And we've got a nice little view of the mountains. Very good. So, that'll be it for the day, I think, once we uh, touch ground here and Jebediah can stretch his legs a bit more. Reflect upon the, uh, the insignificance of a single Kerbal in the universe, having seen his planet from above. As many a, as many a Kerbonaut and an astronaut has done before him. Well, actually, not before him on Kerbonauts. Astronauts have sent in it quite a lot. And uh, with that, I think we will be able to call it an episode. So, yeah, you see that shading issue there? That's an interesting one. It's probably it's probably drawing the parachute as a single conical shape, and that's just the wrong side of it. So this is probably just a transparent texture. But I digress. Here we land. Perfectly safe and sound. And Jeb... Uh, oh, actually, hang on. Let's observe the mystery goo. You observe the goo. Mystery Goo trademark observation from Kerbin's Highlands. Oh, we're in the Highlands. We should watch out for, tr for roaming bands of orange people. Okay, EVA. And go down. Let go. Don't fall over. So take a surface sample for me. Dirt and grass and some small rocks. You suspect this isn't going to be much of a groundbreaking discovery. Oh, jib. Okay, and an EVA report. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? You passed into space. You were in outer space for a fair bit. Okay, store those. And grab on. And board. And recover. Okay, so service sample from the Highlands, EV airport from the Highlands, mystery gear observation from the Highlands, and recovery of vessel after a suborbital flight. So that is 22.4 science earned on this mission. That's 28 science total. That is fantastic. And I think with that, we should call it a day. So I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Back to School. And I shall catch you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and or a favorite. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to be notified of future updates. You can also check out the website where most other content is uploaded. That's all for now. Catch you later.